Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? In today's video we are going to take a little look at camp decoration and how I approach it and my mindset for it. Hopefully give you guys a little bit of help if you're struggling and if you're not, hopefully give you a few extra ideas. So, let's jump in and take a look. Okay, so we're going to take a look at a few different camps I've built here and have a little talk about what I've done and why I've done it and my mindset while I was doing it. My original idea here was actually to start out doing this as a live stream and then cut that down to a video, but that's just not going to be practical. However, if you would like to see the full decoration on this particular house, I will link that live stream down below so you can check it out. It's fairly in-depth, but uh, if you are interested in sort of seeing a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how I did it, then that is available for you. But for now, let's jump in and actually take a little look around this place. Okay, so starting off on the outside, I've not done a great deal outside, but this is basically a reworking of an old build of mine that I did a while ago, a bit of a classic. It's a bit simpler than that one was, but it works. So I threw together a little house here, as you can see. We'll start on the porch and sort of make our way through. So I wanted a slightly more interesting entrance way than just having the door slap straight on the front. So we've got it on a bit of a recess, as you can see. So to dress this up, we've got a little seating area, somewhere to hang out, and basically the idea is um, function first, decoration second. It tends to be the way I go. The other thing that I say an awfully large amount is build small and decorate a lot, because the place will look a lot more lived in that way, and that's basically what we've done here. There's not a lot of room in this house, it's not particularly large. But it is reasonably well decorated. This character actually hasn't got the best set of options out of all my characters, it's a secondary one. But it's come out fairly well. You can see, put a few plants out there just to break up flat surfaces, which is what I do a lot as well. So the window goes some way towards that as well, but a couple of plants, a couple of things out front. And we've got the uh, carnivorous plant there. Due to a lack of a better idea, that's why my punch card machine is here. But again, it does break up that otherwise bare flat wall. And we've got the cage lights hanging across the front as well, just to throw a bit of light out to make the thing look a little bit more attractive, particularly in the evening. And they put out a nice colour as well, those cage lights, and a nice orange, so very, very handy. So let's head on inside. Close the door, close the door too. So, living room first and foremost. So obviously here the idea is a sitting room lounge type deal. It's the sort of function and form follows that. So for this one, we've got windows around the side and the door as well. These are obviously internal walls, so determining from that, I sort of uh, set a focal point over here between the windows, which is what the fireplace does. And once you've got a kind of focal point, focal point in, it gives you a good point to sort of build out from. So here we've got the fireplace, which is ever so slightly off centre actually, but uh, never mind, it'll do. <laughs> you get the idea. And from there, we sort of build out and work around it. So we've got the sofa facing towards it, that's one thing. See a little rug down there just to break up an otherwise plain floor, even with the carpet on it, would be big single colour and uh, not a lot going on otherwise. Then a few little bits of display around, again filling up gaps, filling up spaces, uh, adding a few extra bits on the top like the ship in a bottle and the radio and the fish. <laughs> again just to break things up and fill up gaps is basically the approach. Same with if you look at the fireplace, I've got the uh, flowers and the cuckoo clock on there. All those obviously filling up an otherwise broad blank space, that works quite well as well. Always worth remembering to put the curtains in before you put the furniture in. Always a good idea. Uh, incidentally, the lack of wallpapers there, there is just uh, a slight bug we've got going on at the moment. It sometimes disappears. So, looking around the back side, yeah. <laughs> the big thing I had on this side is I wanted to be able to path through reasonably easily. So that's why the door opens the way it does outward, which is what it's meant to do, but uh, the other alternative would be to have it open there so you can get through. And um, we've got this nice and clear. So I would have put something under here, but my character doesn't actually have anything, well, doesn't have what I had in mind. So I kept it simple, a few bits and pieces again, just breaking up that big flat texture. Choice in the wallpaper, things like that, is just around making it feel homely and warm to live in. Some of the other wallpapers will do the same job, but I'm not quite such a big fan of them, so I went with what I liked. Same again with the cage lights. They're not, strictly speaking, what my first choice for a living room, but the colour is the big thing here. It gives them a much more warming light. A lot of the electric ones have a very white, pale light, and that can be way, either way too bright or way too clinical for my taste, so that's why I generally go for the orange. You also see the lanterns tucked in the back corner there, just to give it a little bit of splash more colour and light around that corners. 
um, in the evening because the cage lights don't quite reach the corners of the room. So that's uh, sort of my mindset. And again, I didn't have anything on this rug initially, but uh, dropped the coffee table in there again because we're quite a large open space. Still just about get through here. And uh, putting the coffee table in there just kind of completes that little sitting area and makes it look like, I imagine, that many of your living rooms do, or at least in principle, if not in, so much in style. And that, uh, you know, take a coffee table in front of the sofa is generally the way to go. Obviously, you could make a television a focal point if you like, but uh, as soon as I, the TVs in game don't actually show anything, it's kind of pointless. And I do like a fireplace as a little uh, focal point as well, it does draw the eye quite nicely. It is very nice, that fireplace. A lot of the stuff in here is Atomic Shop, like the fireplace and the um, sofa here, but uh, a lot of it's in-game stuff as well. So, mixing it up. We'll move on to the kitchen. So again, uh, form following function. Obviously, we need a cooking station in here, and logically a sink and a fridge as well if it's kitchen. This character doesn't have a great deal in the way of decoration for kitchens. There isn't a great deal in the game anyway, but uh, that's why this is a little spartan. But we've kind of gone for the same principle you'd expect to see in the kitchen in uh, a real house, in that you'd have um, sort of tiles and a hard floor rather than carpet so that it's easy to clean, that sort of thing. And I could have put the sort of cooking stove in rather than the minecart one, but it needs to look complete, it would kind of need work surfaces around it, otherwise it just kind of stands out on its own, doesn't look like it blends in, and unfortunately nothing was going to fit in there, um, especially not with the options available on this character, so minecart tucks in the end there, and I do like it. But as I say, this is not the best example, we'll have a look at another one in a bit that's uh, considerably better, I think. So, one of the biggest rooms, most significant rooms, this is the garage of the house. So, up here is actually behind that wall, empty. So the roof is kind of overhangs there, there's not much room to put anything. And I was thinking about putting some decoration stuff up there, but just closing it off ended up looking better, so that's what I went for. But again, we've got the big Steve sign up there to break up an otherwise large flat surface. Gone for the cinder block wallpaper on the inside, because it looks a bit more utilitarian, a bit more garage-like. And we've got the dungeon floors, because the options um, for garage-type flooring are a little limited, and I wanted something different to what I had inside. So I could have used metal floors, something like that, but um, as stone options go, apart from the vanilla foundations, which work quite well, I quite like the dungeon floor. So I usually try and pull things away from the wall, but for this space, because I had so much to cram into it, spreading out around the walls works a little better, plus you can get to the benches a bit more easily if you need to. So we've got all of our necessary crafting benches, and then those are informing the decoration around them. Again, limited options on this particular build, but we've got some uh, bits and pieces on the wall that just break up otherwise large blank textures. There's another wall where the uh, wallpaper's disappeared for some reason. And uh, the little posters and stuff sort of lean towards the function of the workbench there beside. So toolbox there, because it makes sense to add little bits of furniture like the tables and toolboxes around sort of the crafting benches. Functions as a stash box obviously and just adds a little bit more decoration. So radio again, obviously I've got those switched off, but um, having a radio in the garage and space you're going to work kind of makes sense, a little bit of background noise. So extermination is everybody's job next to the weapons workbench. Outside world can never hurt you. Seems to be the closest thing I can think of to power armor. Another little toolbox down there. I like to use the large one, the freestanding one, if I can, but um, this character doesn't have it, so we've got to make do. And again, we've got the Nuka Cola uh, vending machine there just to fill up a gap and break up some space. And same again with the bits and pieces on the wall here. If you take your medication today beside the chem station. And I do like having Nuka Cola stuff around, so that's why that's there. For the lighting, I went for the fluorescent light because this is a functional space rather than a homely space. So having a fluorescent light there with this more white clinical look to it actually kind of works. Whereas it doesn't work as well as a, a cosy sitting room, for example. So there we go. That's sort of my mentality behind this one. Let's have a little look upstairs. I'll close the door. So before we progress upstairs, I've carried the floor on from the kitchen through here, just because it kind of looks neat, and having a random bit of carpet would look a little odd at the bottom of the stairs here, especially given that we can't have any upstairs. So, otherwise this would be dead space, 
So I wanted to put a bit of decoration in here. We tucked a little uh, writing bench underneath so it was somewhere to work. Safe tucked right in the corner because it fits quite nicely there. And this is actually all rug glitched in, which is how I got it under the staircase, because otherwise stuff doesn't like to sit that close. So it's all sitting on that little circular rug there and just allows you to grab that rug and slide it in quite nicely so it works quite well. But uh, a little simple, I would like to have a few more bits and pieces around in here, but uh, this was one of the last things I did on the stream, so we were kind of running out of time by the time we did it. But stairwells could otherwise end up um, sort of dead space, apart from uh, the stairs themselves, obviously. So putting a little bit of something underneath there is a nice way of making it a bit more interesting. I've put uh, power armor stations under stairs and stuff before, but uh, obviously that'll block up the door if you did something like that, so this works quite well there. Let's have a little look at the bathroom. So, obviously, once again, form leading, uh, function leading form. So we've got for sort of waterproof or water resistant type surfaces, which is why we've got the uh, sort of wooden veneer wallpaper and the tiled floor down here. Looks a bit like linoleum, so that kind of works for me. Not a vast amount of bathroom options in the game generally. We need a clean bath if we're going to have clean everything else, but uh, what can we do? A little bath mat down. I would like a few more bits and pieces. I could have put maybe some hampers, stuff like that down if I had them on this character, but I don't. So for now, it's a little simple. Got a little table there and some flowers. I do like putting that uh, beach scene up because that just says bathroom to me. A little beach painting. And again, we've got the windows positioned up high so that, you know, privacy. Not so much where the uh, toilet is, but I suppose that's uh, the least important. <laughs> But yeah, simple. The general idea is, uh, again, bathrooms tend not to be overly heavily decorated anyway. So it does kind of still work, although I would like a little bit more. And again, we've got the bare light bulb in there because the options are a bit limited, at least on this character. But uh, the light bulb puts out the right colour of light, the nice white one for a clear space like a bathroom. So moving on here, something just to fill up the gap there and throw a bit of extra light. So a little lamp. We have the one bedroom in this house and again like the living room this is sort of focused around being homely and comfortable so Muffman wallpaper on there loads and loads of bits and pieces on the wall well some bits and pieces on the wall can't do much about the roof which is a bit unfortunate but uh, again breaking up big blank surfaces with uh, objects like that stuff on the wall uh, the game boards from previous seasons same over here and my walls are doing it again so, little chest of drawers, somewhere to keep your clothes, little dressing table, dress up the bed. I like these vault tech beds in particular because they've actually got bedding on them, which is why I often put sleeping bags on them if I'm using beds that don't, because it just sort of makes a bit more sense to put some form of bedding on there. Again, just to add a little bit more depth and extend it out from the wall, we've got the stash box on the end there, make it look a bit more interesting. A couple of bedside tables and appropriate decoration on those. Carpet because it's bedroom. Nice rug, because again, this is a big patch of open floor. Put a rug down and it looks less bare. I particularly like this desk actually, this uh, dressing table. It's uh, a wall mounted mirror and then just sunk as low as could get it towards the desk to make it look like a dressing table, which works quite well. A nice comfy chair to go in front of it as well. So there we go. Relatively simple decoration, partly because of the limitations of what this character has available, but each centered around a kind of theme and a style with the um, function dictating the following sort of decor style so I do like this for a relatively uh, simple small place it works quite well it's homely I would like a few more things to scatter around we'll see what I do in a couple of others in just a moment sunset does make this look cool as well <laughs> Okay, so for this next one, we're going to take a little look around in the evening, as, well, it's evening, and it should just about nicely highlight what I do with lighting and things like that, and also still show off the decoration quite well. So this is my Cranberry Bog Village that I did a little while ago. I'll link it down below if you do want to see the full build on this. I've got a video on it, and it's definitely one of my favourite camps today. I really like this place. And decoration is a big part of that. So starting outside, obviously this is four more or less separate structures. Technically that's one thing together, but we'll skip over that. So we've got four almost totally separate structures. And the big things that sort of bring it together, apart from enclosing it via walls, which you sort of see tucked around the background there, having the gates, 
it kind of follows the curve of the road a little bit. So even though it's straight on the left, the right hand side curves around with it, which gives it a little bit more of an organic look. We've got things at a bit of an angle. So the trees, this one here is actually uh, already in situ, all the others I've added. So let's just add a little bit more texture. They break up the otherwise blocky shapes of buildings. So obviously this is a fairly square structure here. And that tree just kind of takes the eye away from the corners a little bit, makes it look a little bit more organic. And the others, I mean, again, the same is going on here with the sign and uh, the tree there and a few bits of pieces to pull away from the corners a little bit. So it sort of blends in rather than being a square structure is the goal. And when you look at the sort of lower level stuff, we've got the bathroom down here and a few other bits and pieces around. The uh, tray, uh, cart there and the water collector, which I don't really need because this is an island and there's water right next to it. But it just breaks up the otherwise flat texture and sort of changes the angles a little bit as well. Same with this uh, Fusion Flea stash box, which I never use as a stash box. But it does just slightly break up the otherwise very, very flat front of this line in particular. So if you sort of look all the way along the front, you can sort of see from there that the front of this two structures just go straight all the way down, but the extra stuff on the front really, really breaks that up and sort of deceives the eye into thinking it's not quite so straight and uh, makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. So a few bits and pieces just tucked in, filling gaps here, like the uh, purifier and the symptomatic. Again, a few more bits and pieces around, just breaking up little spaces making things a bit more interesting to look at, just giving it a bit more texture, a bit more depth, and generally uh, making it look as organic as possible. So I'm not going to take a look around the inside of these buildings on this one, keep things reasonably short. Basically the design philosophy is much the same as we talked about uh, last time in the last camp. So, same basic principle. There's a couple of things I do want to point out though before we head on to the next camp. That's uh, um, around the vendors here. I built a separate building for it. And again, just as I said before, gone with the idea of kind of hiding the squareness of the building a little bit and closing off the sort of hiding the corners a bit, breaking up the shape. So, again, we've got the Slocum's Joe sign up there doing that, as I say, in the trees. We head in and have a look on the inside. You'll see, I've gone for a fairly simple approach. I wanted somewhere that was geared towards approaching the vendors, keeping it simple. Gone with the. Uh, cash registers there because they're much quieter than a lot of the other options so I really like it for that and uh, a few extra bits and pieces out front just to make it look a little bit more interesting to the eye a little bit more welcoming again we've got the the fashion extremists hanging down which kind of go with the trees quite well I think they kind of have a similarly organic look to them to the shape of branches and leaves and stuff so I quite like the way that works together along with the lighting as well if we actually have a look behind the vendors, it's kind of dead space back here. There's nothing really going on apart from a few wires. But I've added some displays back here, a few bits and pieces on the wall, a little bit of light as well, just to kind of make it a little bit more interesting. And uh, so that although the focal point obviously is the vending machine, the space at the back is sort of more complete looking, more natural looking. Otherwise it would look unnaturally bare if there wasn't anything going on in there. I suppose you could find a way of bringing the wall forward perhaps or something like that, concealing it in some way, but uh, you know, filling it up makes it look a little bit more interesting, a little bit more pleasing to the eye should anybody come and visit and decide to uh, pay a little visit to my vendors. So on that note, let's take a little look at one last camp and uh, have a look around somewhere a little bit different once again. Okay, so looking at this last one, this is my most recent camp and you see we've gone for a bit of an outdoor kind of using the environment type build on this one rather than a more enclosed sort of house. So again, I quite like walling things off, keeping the bad guys out. So a few little walls around there, light sort of shining through. I think the sun will be coming up soon, so we'll get to see a bit of both. A few little bits of decoration out here. This was just a random thing I threw together. We put the crane treasure hunting sign in, added a few extra signs to it just to make it a little bit more interesting and then anybody coming up the road will see that there is a camp here a bit more clearly as soon as I have stuff on sale actually technically I don't at the moment because uh, I've hit max caps again but still, <laughs> most of the time I do so on the way in, a couple of guard posts as you see protecting it just to dress up this otherwise quite small fence which I did want to try out because it's new I quite like these iron fences, they're simple, but uh, they do work for at least some things. For main defences I think they're a bit underwhelming, but for little bits and pieces here and there they work quite nicely. So I've dressed it up with a few bits and pieces, some stash boxes, just again, close off and conceal what is otherwise a flat, undecorated surface. 
Flip the gate and head on inside. Same thing on this side. They actually, with it being transparent, obviously, it kind of works both ways. Decoration works for both sides, whilst only on one side. So that actually um, kind of saves on budget a little bit. One of the things I've done over here, as you see, is tucked a couple of um, lanterns in and amongst the plants and the corn there, just to give it a little illumination, which kind of draws the eye in, makes it look a little bit more interesting, and adds a splash of colour around, which is quite nice. Yeah, so I'm getting a little lighter now. So, definitely challenging to figure out how to dress up the Nuka Cola collector on here. So, short version was stack stuff around it until it looks like it fits into a junk pile, <laughs> which is more or less what I've done here. Just again, adding a little bit more shape, I suppose, and making the thing look a little bit more organic rather than just a single object plonked down because there was nowhere else to put it, which is kind of the case here. So, on the side, this is actually a re resource node this log pile but dressed it up a little bit with some extra bits and pieces kind of gave it a bit of a curve to it so it's a bit more organic to look at flag in there this i am particularly fond of i wanted something to fill an otherwise large blank space here so i looked at the fashion act bonfire a couple of times in the menus and kind of went past it I ended up dropping it in there unfortunately as you can sort of see the ground on the inside is not the same as the ground on the outside it works in Helvetia, but not here. So I thought I'll dress it up with some stones, and I basically used the smallest size of these stones. They came along with the log cabin build set. And they're all the same one, but I've just spun them around and re-angled them and stuff, and stacked them up. I think they're too high here, two rows high. And just creates a nice little ring around it. Looks nice, organic, and uh, like a pretty cool centerpiece. So. With something like this, because it's very much a building off what's already here, it doesn't have such a focal point in the same way. That kind of does it, but a lot of this stuff was already here. Obviously the buildings and uh, the truck there, which I've added some extra bits and pieces on just to dress it up a bit. Again, fairly standard little crafting space here. Couldn't close this off, so it makes it look a little bit more scrappy, which is fine. Breaking up surfaces and textures. I've got the shorter benches on this side because of the low roof. Taller ones on that side. And just bits and pieces where you need them. Breaking up the surfaces. We already had a box and a barrel here, so I added a few extra bits and pieces just to look like a load of piled up storage just shoved in the corner there. Again, just making it look a little bit bigger, a little bit more organic. Fairly simple though, just stuff to break up surfaces. A little fire pit here with some improvised seating around it. <laughs> so if we have a look over here, this corner was fairly bare initially until I put the solar panel in. We've got the jack-o'-lantern scarecrow there that I've no doubt will make a reappearance before too terribly long. Is that the atomic shop one or was it the other one? I can't remember. This might actually be the base one, I can't remember. But very cool anyway. It's a little more interesting than the standard one, so cool. The otherwise blank wall here, I've just piled a load of posters on, stacked them over. These are all the quest posters. From their DLC, Pioneer Scouts, the uh, Nuka Shine one, Shelters, and the Sheep Squatch. So I just stack those over each other, plastered them on, make them look a little bit more interesting. If I could re-angle them, it would be cool, but otherwise makes that wall look a little bit more... In fact, it's kind of less eye-catching because there's more going on, which I know sounds counterintuitive, but it sort of blends into the background a bit more because it's covered up. If it was blank and bare it would just kind of stick out a bit more to my eye at least so that was the mentality behind that again we already had i think this stash box here i think it was that one it was just sat on the back of this truck so i've added a few extra bits to make it look a little bit more interesting making use of it since we're living here and a few bits and pieces of the ground just drawing the eye out a little bit from the flat walls there same thing with the greenhouse here, that was already in place, unfortunately I couldn't do much on the inside of it. But we've had a few extra bits to dress it up. The sign there is already there, as is the pumpkin, but uh, I've added a few extra bits just to break up the flat surface again. Uh, this is kind of a functionality thing, but uh, I needed somewhere to put that decon arch, and this is about the only place I had space for it. So able to power it quite nicely there and run the cables as I tend to round the outside and try and keep them out of sight a bit so you don't have big obnoxious cables running everywhere I'm quite happy with how that looks kind of a dead space down here for the most part but I managed to squeeze the fermenter and the weapons workbench in quite nicely and I'm happy with how those look 
And again, we've got the boxes here already, but added a few extra bits with the sign at the back there, the thingy cola thing, um, and the lanterns, that's the word, as well. A couple of quiet uh, generators there just to power my vendor, which is, again, not currently doing anything, but when it is, there it is. <laughs> so, well, I had a little round here. Again, we've got a little bit of dead space, and I wanted to squeeze something in here. So this is where my hidden shelter, hidden in air quotes, there it is. Again, the little log pile there is already there, of course. So just uh, incorporating that into the build a bit and piling stuff around it. Same with the porter cabin. It all just adds together to make it look less lonely, I suppose, less standalone. Had to put the condemned thing on there as soon as we can't get inside. Well, not without glitching anyway. Again, there were lots of bits and pieces along this side, if we sort of hop up a little bit. These uh, cinder blocks, the sort of stuff along here, the truck at the back there, as well as this table that were already in place. So I've just sort of added to them and built around them to make it look a bit junky, a little scrappy sort of thing. I threw in a random brotherhood sort of uh, statue memorial here. I'm not entirely sure why, but I did. Again, use the iron fences here to separate things off, so it's not quite the same as having rooms, but it divides areas off quite nicely. Got the stash boxes down there, again, just adding a little bit more to what's going on. There's my power armor station. A lot of scrappiness in the goal here, which is we've got some hay down there that we can't move or get rid of, so just piling up stuff around it and using the space that's available best I can. I threw a roof over it because we don't want things rusting too much. Again, that table at the back was already there. But uh, I did chuck the stash box on it, so again, just adding a little bit more to it, making it look a little bit more finished, a little bit busier. Again, hiding off the corner a little bit there. See the fence turns the corner there. Just putting the plants on it just takes that harsh edge off a little bit, makes it look a tiny bit more pleasing to the eye, in my opinion. So the player home is just one of the large tents here. Again, pick those up from responder vendors, so nice. The rug's a little odd on the floor, I'll concede, but I wanted something on the floor, and unfortunately nothing quite fits in here unless you have foundations. And then the foundations are either too small or too large as well, so it's kind of a no-win with the size of these. But dress it up, put a few bits of furniture around, just things to make it look busy. Groups of three there, the lantern and the radio and stuff on top of the... What on earth do you call that thing? A wooden table. I don't know, I can't remember. You can see what it is though. Again, we've got the cool box there with some flowers on the top just to make it look a little less standalone. Having a look at the seating area here, loads of little bits and pieces around just to make it look a bit more lived in as well. Showing off my Blue Ridge stuff because I do like that stuff and it's been a very long time getting it. <laughs> Using the screen there just to show, hide the bed a little bit, provide a bit of privacy when you're sleeping. As I said before, if you haven't got bedding, stick a sleeping bag on the top because it kind of makes sense. Plushies add a little bit more to it as well, especially since we can't put pillows on there. So makes it look a bit more interesting, just adds a little bit more shape and texture to it. Just makes the whole thing catch the eye a little bit more, makes it look less plain, which is the goal a lot of the time. Same so with piling stuff on the top of the stash box, the safe there that I'm using as a bedside table. This whole camp is very, very scrappy and make-do kind of camping vibe. So using something a little unorthodox for a bedside table works quite nicely there, I think. And I managed to keep the tree in place. It does kind of clip through, which is a bit weird, but I also like having the tree there at the same time. So that's what that's for. The little trick I did to make this glow. It's not perfect and you can't really tell in the daylight, but if you go out behind this tent, hop over here. I don't know if I'll be able to show you, but tucked in this back corner here there are three lanterns along with uh, more stuff to run cabling that doesn't look too obvious. Let's hop back over. And those lanterns kind of shine through the corner but you can sort of see it. Make it look almost like there's light coming from this thing. It's not perfect but it's the closest I could manage. I couldn't manage to glitch one inside unfortunately. There we go. All in all, we're basically in a nutshell, breaking up surfaces and trying to make things look more organic and hiding hard corners, that sort of thing. As well as making the place look as busy as possible. And so we'll see how I've gone about it. Whilst uh, maintaining form and function as well, so that you can get the usability out of the things you need. Like uh, water collection and crafting stations and stuff like that. Just making them look like functional parts of the camp that have naturally grown up as the camp's been built. 
no matter what style it is. So as I said before, if you'd like to check out something a little longer form and have a look at the live stream that I did decorating the first camp we looked at, I will link that down below so you can head over and have a look at that. I will also link the videos relating to the two other camps as well, so if you want to see the actual builds on those, you can do that as well. For now, I do hope you found this useful and gave you some thoughts and some ideas and uh, maybe pointed you a bit more in a, a useful direction if you've been struggling with decoration yourself. If not, I hope you just enjoyed it anyway. So, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please do consider dropping subs and likes for me. I very much appreciate it. Down below the video, you'll find social media links, the merch store, and channel memberships as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel that way, massive thank you to everybody who's done that already. It really helps out. I very, very much appreciate it. And if you get a chance, join us for live streams as well. We are, of course, playing Fallout 76, working through Steel or Rain at the moment. And Mass Effect will be continuing this evening as well, so I do hope you'll be joining us for that as well. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.